We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And to join me in the G spot, that is guest spotlight, do oh, not get day. scared. <laughs> we have the beautiful, the amazing Wendy Raquel Robinson. The crowd goes wild. Yes, they do. At least in my head, they are. Yes. Yeah. You guys, she, this woman doesn't even need an introduction. All right. Aww. You recognize her as the baddest chick in the game, the star of the game. So super excited to have you on. Uh, have so many questions for you. Uh oh. <laughs> well, starting with G Spot. <laughs> Guess spot. <laughs> Guess spot. Yes. But I always warm everyone up with the spice breaker, okay? So okay. before we get into this episode, uh, you are going to have to answer this very important question. When okay. did you first fall in love with yourself? Wow. You know what? I think that's a process that I'm still learning. You know, I just got back from Hawaii where I took a whole self-discovery trip, you know, and said that 23 is for me. But um, I think it would have to be um, back when I was in college and I was just so proud of myself. I went away to Howard University mm. and just being away and on my own and discovering my likes, my wants, my dislikes, my just who I was, not only as an artist, but as a person. I think I started to um, to love myself then, but it's a process. Yeah, it's for sure. It's definitely a process. Did you ever find that you fell out of love with yourself and had to refine yourself? Ooh, girl, every day. Okay, tell us, <laughs> tell us when yes. you fell out of love with yourself. What happened? Um, wow, I I didn't fall out of love with myself. I think I fell more out of um, ooh, not out of love. But the infatuation. Oh, girl, this is deep. I wasn't ready for that. I wouldn't have had the cocktail before. <laughs> um, I think that, uh, you know, I went through a really hard breakup and, you know, just redefining who I was mm. and am, you know, not only as a woman, but as a woman in love yeah. and not losing myself. I lost myself in a lot of relationships and that's kind of when it happened. Mm. Yeah. Tips. What is did you do? Is this the kind of show? Is this that kind of show? Yeah, girl, we, you we start all this. Well, you like I, just make sure you use your body language. <laughs> I'm like, well, damn. Okay, well, where are we going with this? Yes, but it's great. So one of the things that I do, right, is uh, teach people how to build intimacy. Part of that mm. is you sharing. Part of that is us connecting and hearing relatable stories from you, things that have happened right. to you. And my audience gets to um, understand you better and connect with you more effectively when we know that you're a real human. Yeah. Reason why we yeah. need to know that you're a real human is because you're a goddamn star. Oh, and ain't no stars but Jesus. No, but okay. like, <laughs> like, okay, Jesus okay. is, so Jesus is like number one superstar, okay? But oh. you're a lister with him. Oh, so, um, and the reason why I have to say this is because I was already like holding back a little bit was I'm a huge fan. So you got to let me find out for a second. Oh. Been watching you from just like, uh, back in the day when you were piggy and like oh, it just you. and then you know you've been on um, Sinbad and then you know uh, the black like, sitcom <laughs> pretty much yes back in the day oh, right well, thank you but thank then you. like for you to um, use like the Steve Harvey show to me was like the first time that I was like really like tapped in right to your right. bossness but then for you to then go to the game which I'm from San Diego so oh. I already connected with like the show being a San Diego show and I think you were the first introduction Introduction to us seeing really this like bad chick who's running her own empire before like being a boss wow. bitch was in you were that I feel like thank we got to you. see that in your character wow, and there, you. not to mention the fact that you're so freaking hilarious uh -huh. but you literally carried the entire show for a very long time I would tune in for you uh -huh, so that you. I could get my laughs and then you said so many things that I would like copy and steal and say <laughs> well right? that was the writers <laughs> a lot of that was the writers but I did ad lib but I delivery ad -lib matters so delivery matters though I can't thank see you. any Anyone else as Tasha Mack other than you oh. I can't unsee it and I don't think that anybody else was meant for that role but you Thank I you. really feel like you own it you embody it and then just seeing the new season of the game this the show how the show has <laughs> stayed so consistently relevant and entertaining wow. is incredible okay so I'm done gassing you up now okay I'm like wow uh, <laughs> no I, I receive it all I receive it all you made me fall back in love with myself <laughs> so when did I fall back in love with myself uh, two minutes ago thank you Thank you. I love it. I love it. But I do want us to get like personal here, right? So we'll start first though, just with you sharing, like how is Tasha Mac relatable or connected to the real you, the the real Wendy? 
Wow. I think she's my alter ego. Mm. I, I really refer to her as that. You know, she um, she's audacious. She's bold. She's uh, unapologetic. Mm. So it's all those things that I really wish that I could be. Yeah. You know, Wendy has a lot of um, it's so interesting you bring that up because I'm conquering a lot of fears that I have. And to pull into my inner Tasha Mack is where I'm trying to go and to be. And it's like, okay, well, when do you go to get there? But I think there's a lot of things that we have in common with that. Yeah. Okay. So what about when we're having a bad day? How do we turn it on? Because a lot of us don't know how to turn on that magic or turn on that fire. When you don't feel like being Tasha Mack and being a bad bitch that day, <laughs> right. how do you do it anyways? I have so many affirmations. Mm. Oh, my God. So I listen to gratitudes and I write my gratitudes. And, and it's not just because Oprah says so, but um, I have gratitude affirmations that I do. Louise Hayes is another um, mm. mindfulness yeah. uh, coach that I listen to. And then I, I have to surround myself with color and energy you know and um i just i pull from everything like i'm pulling from the christmas tree that's been, you know what i mean <laughs> My i'm sorry christmas tree i know it's still, not on camera uh, <laughs> but when you said star and i was looking at the star it was just like so many things that even when you were saying that yeah. so i really take in the space that i'm in yep. i protect my energy yep i've learned how to establish boundaries yeah. a lot more and not just because i'm an empath so people come mm. around and it's like, I don't like energy drainers. I can't do vampires. And it's like, ooh, I have to really protect my energy. So you feel other people's energy. Yes. Okay. Yes. So yes. that is tough, right? It's tough. It's tough. Because if like if you're having a bad day, it's like, oh my God, I'm walking through every single yep. thing with you. And I'm just like right there. And it's just like, how can I make it better? I'm such a giver. Uh. And what I'm learning is that you can only give to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Protect your energy or you're depleted. How has that shown up in relationship with you, with romantic Ooh, relationship? God, well, maybe that's why I'm single. I'm depleted <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, so it, it shows up in sometimes being an overgiver. And so I'm learning that. I'm learning to protect and to get everything that I need out of my next relationship and love. Because I'm, I'm a romantic. I yeah. believe in love to a point. Oh, God. Me and, me and J-Lo's birthdays are a day apart. Oh, I love And Jayla. Sandra Bullock. So it's J-Lo, Wendy, and Sandra Bullock. So you're a Leo then. Girl. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I just had a baby and he's a Leo. Oh, so watch out, girl. Yes. I, I prayed August? for a Leo. Is I prayed for a Leo. Yes, he's August. Oh, okay. That's Obama. That's, yes. you know, Hallie. But I prayed for that. He was going to be a Virgo and I had a, a conversation with God and I was like, <laughs> I can't, Don't give me no Virgo. I can't do a Virgo. I, I, I'm married to a Capricorn, so there's strong oh, Capricorn strong. energy in the house. And I'm a Capricorn. Oh. I couldn't do a Virgo. And God bless me. Like, we're like this. That is So, great. yes, I had my Leo baby. Oh, good. So, I already know what that Leo energy is. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Steve Harvey's a Capricorn. Yeah. The best yeah. men are. I'm wow. telling you. <laughs> well, maybe, I need, maybe I need a Capricorn. So you, <laughs> you, you are going to... I am going to get personal because... Um, I, I have heard about personal things that have happened to you in marriage and in relationship, right? And hear? I know what you have to use, <laughs> you have to use some of that, I'm sure, in your role, right? As Tasha Mack. So on the new game on Paramount Plus, okay? So the game that uh, revived and came back on Paramount Plus. Thank you, Jesus. In the first season, it showed you having a tumultuous relationship with your husband, Pookie. Mm. there was um, trials and tribulations that you guys were experiencing as you being this career oriented uh, woman who owns her own agency and you have these very high profile clients you not having enough time and energy to dedicate necessarily to the family household right right have you experienced any of that in your own personal life when it came to having a successful career and having to tape all the time, how did you juggle? Oh, that's, I think that's the challenge that, you know, comes with the acting and any, any job. How do you balance work? How do you balance life? And I run a school full time. Wow. Profit, you know, so I'm wearing <clears throat> so many different hats and so many different, um, personalities and that's why I said it's learning to find those boundaries and I had to learn the hard way mm. you know because somebody's going to suffer I ended up suffering more how so because I wasn't able to give as much as I wanted to the things that really mattered to me and so I found myself almost in a tailspin mm -hmm. and it's like okay what's going to be best for Wendy yeah so I had to stop that you know everything that spirals downward all, always comes back up 
So on the way back up where I feel I am now, it's learning to prioritize what makes sense, what is best for me without feeling like it's being selfish, but it's just self-care and self-love. Yeah. Yeah. That had to have been hard though, because you had a marriage of 16 years. Um, was right. Was it about yeah. 16? It was, it was 13. 13. But we were separated for six. Okay. Yeah. So how did you handle that like hardship or that emotional, you know, like, I want to say emotional turmoil that you're probably going through and then still having to show up every day with a smile on your face, being kind to your coworkers, to your colleagues on set. How did that affect you? Well, it wasn't a tumultuous relationship. Mm. You know what I mean? If anything, it's like, you know, people grow apart or people can grow together. But um, it wasn't that it was tumultuous. It was just filming in Atlanta, you know, trying to, you know, live your life, trying to do so much. And um, I think we just really grew apart. We got married kind of young, sort of, young mentally. And I think we just didn't assess. I always say, if you go through a divorce, maybe that's how you should enter the marriage. Because the way that we divorced, everything was laid out. Mm. And if everything oh, is laid out, the clarity, the you know, there are no blurred lines. There's no, oh, I'm just so emotionally engulfed in all of this that I just don't see it all. So when you see everything and it's all laid out, you know, it's just, it's speaking to the head more so than the heart. Mm. But sometimes you need to lean towards that to a greater understanding. Because a lot of people will tap out. A lot of people will say, oh, no, I'm out the game even though you're still on the game, right? <laughs> no pun intended. Yes, da, da, da. But a lot of people would say like, I'm done with love, I give up. And a lot of people don't have. How did you not give up on love after that experience? It's so funny. My birthday is July 25th and it's supposed to be the day of quixotic. So, you know, there's erotic, exotic, mm. but then quixotic. Quixotic is that, you know, in love with the love, like yeah. Don Quixote, you mm -hmm. know, it's the whole, and, and I'm, I still believe in it. I do. I really believe in love. My parents, they would have been married 70 years. Mm, 70. Wow. I lost my dad about three and a half years ago. Oh, my and condolences. Yeah. So I have I was born and raised in a home where, you know, united we stand. Yep. You know, it didn't work for me, but I do believe that, you know, there is a wonderful mate out there, a partnership. I look at it now as mm -hmm. a partnership. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you got to go through shit to understand, For okay, sure. how to work this out, why it didn't work, and this, that, and the other. But, um, yeah, I believe there's a wonderful partnership out there. So maybe I still see things as rose-colored glasses, and but I do. Do you feel like, do. tell me, tell I'm me. I'm so Tinkerbell and Wendy and Peter No, Pan. but that's good. We need more of that, right? <laughs> like we need to stay in high vibration even after we experience some of life's like hardships. Yeah. Not everything is always a win. Sometimes it, you know, feels like a loss, but really it's mm -hmm. a learning lesson. Mm -hmm. um, if you had to take any footnotes of like, these are the key elements that I learned about marriage, or this is what I learned about even myself during that process, mm. what would you tell us? I would tell you to open up, to communicate, to not try and, I held my breath a lot mm. and didn't really be as transparent and as authentic uh, at times. I remember, you know, God, it was like my 40th birthday and I had spent all this money and I was like, oh, we're going to take this trip. And I'm like, I don't want to go. I was like, what, what, what? I don't want to go. Okay. And the lesson that I should have done was, okay, well, I have to go mm. and I'm going to go mm. and, and just be okay with that as opposed to, you know, there's, there's an ebb and flow yep. where you do have to compromise, yeah. but at the same time, I don't want to put myself on the back burner. Yeah. It's for what, you know what I mean? I don't want to change what, for what? You know what I mean? And there are different attachment styles. Mm -hmm, you know, there's the sure. anxious, secure, really and yeah, the, the avoided. Yes. Yeah. So I've, I've been doing the work. So now I think in just doing the work and understanding not only my attachment style, mm -hmm. but also uh, just knowing more about who I am. So you me. would say that because you didn't communicate, you were leaning into avoidant? I was leaning more into an anxious avoidant. Mm which, you know, sometimes they can kind of yep. cross pollinate. Yep. And maybe in my marriage, it was more, um, I, I, I was secure in the marriage. Mm -hmm. I felt secure, but then there were times where it was like, it just, oh girl, you're taking me back. Cause it's been, we've been separated. It'd be almost seven years. And then you go back, it's almost 20. So, ah, 
I say the greatest takeaway that I have from that is the more that I'm learning to love myself mm-hmm. and know myself, the greater I will be for my next partnership. Beautiful. To move on from that. Yeah. Beautiful. What makes us withhold? What makes us not share how we feel about situations uh, such as your birthday? What What keeps us quiet? And so I know you mentioned attachment style, but what is it? What are the thoughts that you're telling yourself and what you're afraid of? If I who mm. just like you avoid those tough conversations or mm-hmm. have a hard time expressing how they feel. I want right. to know for you, Wendy Raquel, why were we withholding? What were we afraid of? Yeah, I can't speak for the we. I can only speak for the me. Um, and, it, and it depends, especially on what the topic is. It's mm-hmm. so interesting. I was talking to one of my girlfriends and she was like, you're so non-confrontational and you this, that, and the other. Yeah. I said, listen, I don't have the capacity mm. to sit up here and go back. What are we solving for? So let's get to what we're solving for. Mm. What is that? And then as opposed to, okay, people want to debate for hours. Yep. I don't have the capacity for that. I got to run a business. I got to run my life. I got properties. I got, you. I, I got so many other things. Yep that you know provide me happiness you know and it's like so what are we solving for so it's not that I hold back just in terms of you know I don't want to have these conversations but maybe in my marriage I wasn't as forthcoming like I said you know with the Hawaii trip Mm -hmm. I remember that and then I held it in and then the chakras you know I I started (laughs) no for real that message with your chakra your center (laughs) you hold it in look like I'm holding in this little stomach right here I hope I still look cute (laughs) but but you hold it in and it's not healthy at all and that creates dis-ease in your life and so I did I suffered from fibroids and I really believe that that is the trigger that started it mm. because this is your center and you cannot you cannot live without living in your truth yeah and it's so funny I have it painted on the walls at, at, at my school to thine own self be true I tell it to the kids all the time mm-hmm. but it's like but okay but what are you doing Miss Wendy and it was like oh I have to start walking in my truth yeah and it's okay so you mentioned off camera a second ago oh, that Lord. you what? What I meant just went spicy. to therapy yeah. At what point in your life did you start that? Because a lot of people are fearful of therapy. They're like, oh, no, mm-hmm. I don't want to open Pandora's box. Right. They're not open to it. Right. Sometimes at what point did you say, I need therapy? This is something that's going to help or enhance my life. Four months ago. Wait. <laughs> Girl. I love how I love how everyone's yes. like, I go to therapy. Like, we just started therapy. OK. I did. No, actually, it was like, no, I did. You know, coming out of COVID, I really feel that there is a post-COVID kind of, everybody's not the same. Yeah. Something's a little off. There was a shift. There's there was a, a shift. shift. There's a sure. huge shift in the universe. And so I've, I've always given people grace. It's like, OK. All right, that's okay. Have patience. Mm-hmm. Grace is that that moment you take before you go off. Right. Grace. That pause. That, that pause. Have a moment. Boom. <laughs> so there, there's grace with that. But I went through so many losses. Mm. And right when we came back to shoot this season, it was in July. And I had lost one of my best friends. I had to put my dog down. Oh, my God. Somebody, it was just a, a guy I was dating. It was like, it just didn't, you know, go. It was just like, boom, 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 boom. And then you got to get out there and make America laugh. And you're number one on the call sheet. So what are we going to do? Because, yeah, you got to show up, you know. How? And it was like, I got to show up for myself. And I had mm-hmm. to deal with those things and learn to unpack, release, and, you know, just protect it all. Yeah. So um, actually through the studios, Yeah. I had a great, it was over Zoom and it was just wonderful, but it also helped me to um, to examine myself and to look at myself and to really write down those things, coping mechanisms, yes. you know what I mean? Like look around the room, like I said, oh, find the joy, find the light, find the uh, things that could bring me back to mindfulness, mm. you know, because I started doing mindfulness walking while I was in uh, COVID because I couldn't go to the gym. So I just walk, I live in it's the area like this and yeah. I do those heels and put on my tapes and that's how I got into my affirmations this that and yes. the other because it was just it was an interesting time it was a dark time so I had to be my own light yeah and after a while you can only be your own cheerleader without I need a jolt I need some help yeah and um just would have wonderful conversations just to get stuff off my head mm-hmm. off my heart and just talk to somebody that had an unbiased opinion that could um just kind of give me, you know, great reading materials and just, you know, a soundboard. I love and this. And I needed it. 
I love yeah. this. I, love I this. needed it more than I thought I needed. turned into an ad for therapy it. right now well, through your look, testimony. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. No, but Prayer is good. great. You know, I'm, you know, I'm a child of God. I believe in that too. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you just need, you know, sometimes the scientific approach helps a lot more too. I believe there needs to be a blend. So yes, I think absolutely. that you can, you can definitely merge mm-hmm. your spirituality also with psychology. Mm-hmm. I think that those go hand in hand to God created our minds. He built us for a reason to be as intelligent as we are. Absolutely. Why would he not give us the tools to be able to support one another? Absolutely. And that's all it was basically. Yeah. And she was, you know, I've never even met her in person. Yeah. And, but that's okay. That's how, that's how we're doing therapy <laughs> right. in 2023, right? Absolutely. It is uh, over Zoom. Now you don't have to leave the comfort of your home or set in right. order to do it. But I love that you are so open and honest and transparent about uh, doing it at this point in your life because a lot of people mm-hmm. think like what's well, too late I am who I am and no. that's not the case we're always evolving like you said you know when did I fall in love with myself yeah. when did I fall out of love it's it's a process and I call life it's just a work in progress yep and a work in process yep so it's both of those and I just look at myself like yeah that's where I am who I am today I is not who I was yesterday or maybe even 10 minutes ago when I walked into the house because I had on a whole other outfit. Honey, I'm giving <laughs> you somebody else, okay? Now I'm like, yes, <laughs> open up the window, yes. <laughs> But, but but you can do that though also because you look so freaking good. Oh, like, bless your heart. We were able to like do a little wardrobe change within a matter of minutes. How? So give me those tips. Like how are we staying so fly like Ugh. through decades, right? Um, I was telling my girlfriend, we were talking about like wardrobe for the um, episode when you were coming on. And I was like, well, I already know she's going to come fierce because I've never seen her not fierce like wow. on red carpets and then also on your show. And I'm just like, Thank you. she's going to come with it. <laughs> How, how do Ooh. we stay so freaking fly? How do Ooh. we stay in great shape? What are we doing? Our wow. skin is glowing. What Ooh. is, give me all the tips. Well, it's called Glam Squad. <laughs> Shout out to the glam that's over here. Yes. Okay. But every day, no, it's, it's not like this. I don't wake up like this. But um, like I said, I, I did, I discovered walking. Walking is literally the secret. When the, the gyms were closed. It was, <sighs> no, well, I started as a dancer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've been dancing for years. That's why I was yes. like, oh, you want me to take off my shoes? Yes. Too? You're getting so, yes. yes. <laughs> but um, I would go on these mindful walks with nature. And next thing I know on my little pedometer, it's like, you have done eight miles. Yep. And it's like, wait, huh? What? And I would just get lost not only to what I'm listening to, but just taking in everything that I'm seeing. I just started back at the gym. So, 2023, I'm like, I'm, I'm committed to getting into the best shape of my life. Yes. Better than what you are now? Girl, oh I'm God. not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not where I am. You know what I mean? You know when your body is right. <laughs> you know when your body right. You know what I mean? This is, this true. is, this is smoke and mirrors right now. No, this but is, you look really, it really good. It I'm like, and make sure you sit up tall like this. this. I feel like I'm sitting like this. <laughs> yes, this is the best shape of my life. But um, no, it's like you can where I'm starting now in January and where I hope to be and pray to be in December uh, will just be, and it's a mental, Mm -hmm. it's a mental shift for me, not just physical, but it's a, that's important too. I can, trust me. I get it. I get it. Not everybody knows what the heck mindful walks are though. Mm. Break that down. Cause people are listening like mindful walk. What do I need? What what do I do for that? (laughs) What do I do? What do I do? I, well, maybe that's a a phrase that I've coined. Okay. Break um, that down. What is that? There's an app and it's called mindfulness. Okay. And so they have different meditations that are on there. And like I said, even my affirmations, I go on YouTube and I just go through it all. Everything from, oh, and your horoscope for today. But it's like, (laughs) I go from there to, you know, TD Jakes to Les Brown and just listen to motivational things that just really inspire me and just bring me back to one and empower me Mm -hmm. and I'm just walking and listening and you know fortunately where I live is beautiful scenery yeah so I'm being mindful of the leaves I'm being mindful Mm. I've even seen how the seasons change and when I was in Atlanta oh my god those are real seasons oh yeah it was so so beautiful I would be in Piedmont Park from like you know next thing I know it's like almost three hours have gone through and you know here I am just walking I love this because I do this too so I'm a huge like hiker i love to hike uh these hills i can hike all day right right so mine might be mindfulness walks but i would call them mindfulness hikes okay okay because i'm going right. up the mountains um but that is my time when i have conversations with god mm-hmm. conversations with self yes uh I, I start doing my to-do list in my head as well right but i love that you're saying that you like tap out and sometimes you're listening to audios and, mm-hmm. and, and it is important what we absorb right mm-hmm. um you guys if you're listening and you aren't doing mindfulness walks 
I, I love this spicy tip from Wendy because what she's saying is like take time for self. Mm. And even if you don't have that much time in your week, right? So maybe you don't can't squeeze in a therapy session, but maybe <laughs> you could do a, a 15 to 20 minute walk in between a work break. Right. And, and take that time to just really um, relax yes. and give yourself the self-care that you need is what yes. you're saying. Like I, that's beautiful. And it, sometimes it's relaxing, but sometimes it's also those endorphins. Like you said, you know, it gets that. Yeah. Sometimes it's the to do. The to-do list, list. I'm going too fast. But um, like when I'm at the gym, like I love the elliptical, but I love it for a different reason. (laughs) I would learn my lines on it. Oh. So I wouldn't just tap out. I like it because it's an easier workout for me. Like it's not oh. as hard as a run. <laughs> right, right. But I, love, but that also keeps me, you know. But I love fit. that yours is strategic. But, You're but like, mine I'm is very two strategic. Birds with one it's stone. like, honey, it's like, woo. If I told you how many scripts and scenes and you know the work that I've learned oh and monologues God. on the elliptical, and next thing I know, boom, an hour's gone by, and it's like, not only do I know my lines, but I know my fines. Ooh, I know my lines, my other lines. Lines yes. are fine. Okay, <laughs> yes. I like that. I like that. That's Thank perfect. Oh, yeah. um, question because so memorization. How are you? Mm. This is just like a, a work related question. Ooh. How do you memorize so much freaking information? <sighs> because what what I do right when I'm talking to my clients, when I'm um, even doing the podcast, mm-hmm. it's very much uh, in that moment, just uh, being myself and giving someone what they need in that moment. But when it comes mm-hmm. to lines, you are portraying another person. You're right. stepping into a role of someone else who's lived a, another life, and you are now mm-hmm. the vessel that gives this information on their world. Right. But how are you memorizing their life? Ah, well, you know what's interesting? The root word of rehearsal is to rehear. Mm. Yeah. So it's also great when you have a partner or somebody that you can, you know, do the lines back and forth with. Yeah. That helps it seep in. But if you don't have that, like I said, learning and re just. Just wow. Just I look at the situation. I look at also the intention. Where is this character emotionally mm. with that? And then sometimes the lines just kind of come to me. Yeah. The, the hard thing about TV is that it's a writer's medium. So you have to be verbatim. You know what I you mean? You have to it's, like repeat it as they want it. Ooh, as it is written. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes but it's it like, it's not this, copy? it is that. It's not, and it's for. You know what I mean? <laughs> because it does change. It changes the intention yeah. as well. So um, there that there's that element. But a lot of times when I really think about what the intention is and the emotional mm. space that that character is in, it also helps. So I start with that. And then when I have like a treacherous monologue and not enough time, I take it by the alliteration. You know, you take the first letter yeah. of each thing and you kind of see it like that. And then boom, it'll happen. Yeah, it comes to it. Yeah. So I'm currently watching um, the game right now. Uh, season two is back and mm. uh, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. Okay. Uh, it, 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 you haven't missed a beat ever. You just, this is when I tell you this role was meant for you. Um, you. Share with everyone, like what we can expect this season, uh, what we could look forward to, like, wow. give us, give us some insight so that we can get guests up. Because I need everybody geeked on this show the way I am. Oh, thank you. I, you know what's so crazy? I I feel like it's art imitating life, or is life imitating art? Right. In terms of the art, you know, <laughs> with myself. So last season, you know, we tackled mental health. Mm-hmm. We tackled colorism, hairism, um, all of those different things. But I feel like now, you know, Tasha is really. She spiraled all the way down, Mm. you know, and damn near lost everything, almost her mind. And so now you're going to see the effects that it takes on her body, Mm. on her soul. Um, So it was it was a heavy season for me. Wow. Yeah. That's and another reason why I needed therapy therapy, was like, oh, so we really doing this, you know, in terms of my artistic yeah. endeavor which had always been my escape but no artistically you're gonna deal with some shit yep. and now in your life you're gonna deal with some shit and it just um it balances out because it became um it became therapeutic mm. and allowing me to see it in that way but uh getting back to your question what are you gonna see you are going to see um a woman who is not only resilient but is tenacious and when I say she is tenacious, she is by any means necessary. Uh, whether I go back to that life yeah. that I had as an agent and a boss, yeah. you know, or do I take all of those things that I've learned and lost and change those lessons into blessings? 
similar to what you have sense. done in your life. In my life. It okay. was crazy. It was like an awe-inspiring it season. Yes. You know, and that's why I was like, I need to talk to somebody because it was just too... It was a lot. It was too parallel to yeah. everything. You know, and sometimes you wonder, it's like, okay, are the writers following me in my head? It's like, <laughs> no, they not. This is crazy. You know, even with, you know, some of her physical ailments that she's going through. It was like, wow. Oh. And I had a great, it's wonderful being a producer on a show because I'm able to really have those authentic conversations. Yeah. And it's like, okay, we're going to tackle these storylines. Let's make sure we're coming from a real place where yep. we can use it to, you know, to help others that are going through this. Oh, I love this. So, I love yeah. this is your way of giving back to others. Yes. We do, I did see the mental health that you guys were tackling and I'm like, dang, this is a dope concept. Mm -hmm. um, even when you guys were showcasing last season that Malik uh, was seeing his friend because, you know, the stress levels that were induced right. or the lack of attention or love they may have felt like he was getting from you. Mm -hmm. I just thought that that was so important that we were even covering that because within the black community, it, there is still a stigma around mental health that we are fighting mm -hmm. every day. And Absolutely. this is why I have the podcast. I'm pushing, pushing, pushing and like. You guys do the work. Don't be afraid. We are available. There's resources towards, you know, towards helping your mental health. Mm -hmm. But even this episode is going to shine light to someone who may be like withholding or withdrawn mm -hmm. or feel, you know, a little afraid to do it. Like knowing that you did it and you mm -hmm. found a way throughout your day with all your lines <laughs> that you got to memorize, the elliptical, your uh, your walks, <laughs> you still fit in time for a therapy session. <laughs> I, no, well, you have to. In therapy, that became first and foremost. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And everything else. Okay. We'll fall in line after that. Yeah. But Tasha's going through, um, wow, she, she takes off her superwoman cape. Mm. You know, so many times we put on that cape yeah. and it's like, I've got this. Yep. And it's like, and everything else is crumbling around yeah. her. But now everything has crumbled and now the cape must come off. I and love you've this. got to take that time to look yourself in the this. mirror and say, you know, who am I? What yeah. am I? And why am I? Okay, how are we, uh, we take the cape off, we are letting Superwoman chill for a second, but how are we making time in our personal life to find love and dating right now? Girl, I don't know, you the, you the matchmaker. <laughs> <laughs> so That's what you're going to help me. What I'm hearing is that we're going to reverse this. We're going to put that thing in reverse it. If it's just <laughs> it, 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 it. Hey, uh, you know, what's so crazy. It's like, so where do you meet people? I don't, I don't go out. I'm, I, I work, I run my business, I do my events, and it's like, I got yeah. you. I got you. We're gonna we're gonna do a whole another sidebar. We're we gonna do it, girl. We've been talking for about the uh, we're gonna, gonna do, we gonna do a whole another uh, sidebar personal uh, conversation. <laughs> oh, on the but you are gonna let everybody know um, uh, where they can find you, your organization, your business. Oh, yes. Tell everybody, share all that information because I know you are on a, a time crunch. Okay, mm -hmm. so let everybody know where they can find you um, and watch the show and catch just any more content that they want of you. Oh, absolutely. So please follow me on Instagram at I am. Wendy Raquel, I am, because you ain't. Uh, that's my little tag. I am Wendy Raquel, uh, R A Q U E L. Don't do that, baby. Shut up. And then, of course, you know, the game is streaming now on Paramount Plus, and you can catch all of the episodes between Netflix and, and Hulu, but definitely you're everywhere. Plus. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Every network. That's okay. It's a beautiful the thing. An Amazing Grace Conservatory. Please follow us. Um, that's my, um, that's the greatest footprint I'm going to leave on this mm. planet. And uh, it's, it's beyond a passion project. It's a purpose project. I love it. I'm so blessed to have you on. You Thank guys can you. always uh, play with my Twitter, stroke my IG at SpicyMari. Go to thespicylife.com. Click it and subscribe. Download this episode. Share it with mm. a friend. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life. I love it. Yay. So wait, so what did you say? Your Twitter, what? Uh, you can play with my Twitter or stroke my IG. Play with my Twitter. <laughs> my IG. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> oh,